Hi hey everyone, today I'm going to be walking you through the 9 achievements you need to complete the glory of the Dream Raider achievement for Amidrasil in patch 10.2 to unlock the Shadow Dusk Dream Saber mount. Before we begin, you may find these achievements easier to track by downloading the Instance Achievement Tracker add-on if you don't have it already. This can help you more easily see when you've met the criteria for your achievement before the end of a boss encounter or if the achievement has failed and you need to reset and try again. One other thing to note for some of these achievements is that you will need a minimum of 6 players to participate. Some achievements can be done solo, but others do require multiple people to complete. Without any further ado, let's get started with our first achievement. Narut's achievement is called Mina Pastures. For this one, you'll see 8 harmless blossoms around the edge of the room, 4 on one side and 4 on the opposite side. You'll need to play this fight as normal until you enter the intermission phase, where you have to burn the roots to break the boss's immunity. When the intermission begins, every player will be marked with a circle that will detonate after a couple of seconds, that is if you're running the encounter on normal difficulty. Run these circles over the harmless blossoms to burn them, and then continue the boss fight as normal. One player can burn multiple blossoms at once, but it would be easier to simply assign 8 people to deal with one blossom each. Once that's done, and the boss is defeated, you'll have your first achievement. Cruelty Free is the next achievement which asks you to free the three trapped critters from the Torment Forged pots in Agira's boss room before you defeat her. You'll find the pots to the extreme left and extreme right of the room, with two on one side and one on the other. Pull the boss over to one side so you can more easily reach the first set of pots, and destroy them by hitting them once with Blistering Spear. Then simply move Agira to the other side of the room to destroy the third pot with the next set of spears. Just be wary that you will have to deal with one of her torment mechanics while moving from one side to the other. With all three destroyed, you can finish the boss fight. The next achievement is Swog Champion, which can be completed during the Volcaros encounter. Before you pull the boss, one player needs to pick up the horn found on the right side of the room as you enter the stairs of the boss room. With the horn collected, you can pull the boss as normal, and the player with the horn will see an extra action button. Click this to summon Lieutenant Lunker, a big frog that you can and should ignore. The Lunker will summon waves of small swaglets that will fixate random players, and these need to be eaten by the boss to earn the achievement. If you're targeted by a swaglet, simply stand next to the tank, and Volcaros will passively eat any nearby swaglets as he melees the tanks, or uses his tank mechanic. Make sure not to DPS Volcaros down too quickly during the fight, as he does need to eat 30 swaglets before you defeat him, but once that's done, you can finish the encounter as normal. Moving on to Laradar's achievement, don't let the dough hit you on the way out, you'll want to clear the boss room of trash, but before you pull the boss, one healer should head to the entrance of the room to find Ivy, a friendly doe who needs to be healed. I would start by marking Ivy and setting her as your focus target if you're a healer. Ivy can be herded, meaning she will run in a given direction when a player is close enough to her. Designate one player to look after Ivy during the fight, placing her somewhere in the boss room that's far enough away from Laradar and his mechanics, but close enough to be healed. Make sure everyone else stays away from her. You'll need to keep her alive for the entirety of the Laradar encounter, as well as removing her singed stacks by using the Seed of Life on her. This should be easy enough to do on normal difficulty, just be sure not to push the boss into phase 2 too early, otherwise the Seed of Life will deactivate before you've removed all of her stacks. The only other thing to note is to focus heals on Ivy during Laradar's Inferno cast, when the group needs to hide in the brambles. You can herd her into the brambles if you want to, but it's much easier to keep her outside and just focus heals on her throughout the inferno. With Ivy alive and all her stacks removed, finish the boss fight as normal. The Council of Dreams achievement is called Ducks in a Row. On the left side of the boss room, you'll see a friendly duck called Sergeant Quackers. To earn the achievement, you need to make sure everyone in the raid becomes ducked at the same time while stacked on top of Sergeant Quackers. The easiest way to do this is to have the entire raid stack next to Quackers at the start of the boss pool, 
and then have one player who is targeted by Pip's polymorph bomb run out to soak three flowers and rush back to the group to let the polymorph drop off and transform everyone else into ducks. If you do this successfully, Sergeant Quackers will join the fight and you're free to finish the encounter from there. If you encounter any issues with this achievement, try ensuring that any druids or shamans in the group are in their humanoid form before the polymorph goes off. Nimue is the next boss, and their achievement is called Dream Within a Dream. This achievement requires five players. Before you pull the boss, mark five locations around the back edge of the room with world markers. You'll need these later. You can pull the boss and play the encounter as normal until Nimue reaches roughly 20% health, depending on their energy level. At that point, have five players go to one world marker each and type slash sleep. This will enter them into a dreaming realm where they will be able to see a small green butterfly nearby. After all five players have clicked their butterfly, a manifested monarch will spawn back in the normal realm with the boss. You'll need to kill the monarch before you defeat Nimue, so be careful not to cleave off of the butterfly and onto the boss too much. Also be mindful that the monarch will send out lots of fast moving orbs that will knock you back, and the reason for waiting until 20% boss health to summon the monarch is because it will respawn after every intermission phase and it's a pain to deal with. But once the monarch is defeated, you're safe to kill Nimue. The next achievement is Haven't We Done This Before? For this achievement, I would recommend unlocking the bridge to cross over to Smolderon first. You then need six players to run back to the entrance of the raid where you'll find a small pool of water with a flower in the centre. You might also need to kill a trash pack or two to reach it safely. When you enter the pool, you gain a 10 minute buff called Dreaming Quintessence. With this buff on at least six players, head back to Smolderon. On either side of the boss room, you'll see three runes on the ground. The six players with the Quintessence buff need to stand on one of these runes each during the boss fight and use the extra action button to douse the rune. This has an 8 second cast time and the rune will explode for raid wide damage when it's doused, so choose wisely when you douse your rune. Once one player has doused their rune, they lose their buff and can't douse another, so you'll need six separate players for this. But with all six runes doused, you can complete the boss fight to earn your achievement. Next up, Tindral's achievement is called Welp, I'm Lost, and this one needs to be completed while flying between the boss platforms in the boss fight. On the large branches of a Midrasil, there are six lost whelps that six different players need to help collect. Although I don't have a screenshot or video of every whelp location to show you since the boss room is so huge, our group managed to complete this achievement in one attempt by using a targeting and pinging macro to show us whelp locations while flying but if this achievement takes you a few attempts, don't be disheartened. There should be three whelps between the first and second platform, and another three between the second and third platform. Simply fly through a whelp to pick it up. The other important thing to note with this achievement is that each player who is carrying a whelp needs to stay alive until the encounter is complete, otherwise the achievement will fail. The boss can be killed once all six whelps are collected and their carriers are all alive. Finally, we have Farak's achievement called Memories of Teldrassil. Before you head to the boss room, five players need to go back into the main part of the raid after defeating Tindral. Then, each of the five players needs to collect one memory each from these locations. The memory will look like a wisp that you can click on to gain a 60 minute buff. Take these five memories to the boss and begin the fight as normal. You don't need to do anything special until phase two, when you deal with the waves of two infernals each, the screaming souls and the healer adds. Once each wave of healer adds spawn, one additional healer add will spawn with them and automatically remove one of the five memory buffs from one of the players. Simply make sure the additional healer add is healed before it reaches the heart of a midrasil and repeat this until all five memories have returned. The spawn points for each healer ad are scripted and not necessarily linked to where the rest of the healer ads spawn. Keep an eye out for each wave and ping the additional ad if you need to, to make sure it gets healed in time. Then simply finish the fight as normal and you'll earn your final achievement. And with that, you will have earned the glory of the Dream Raider achievement and unlocked the Shadow Dusk Moonsaber mount. Thank you very much for watching today's video. 
and if you have any questions or pieces of advice that you'd like to give for any of the achievements in this video, please do leave a comment down below. And if you'd like to catch me live one day, you're always welcome over on my Twitch channel which is linked on screen, as well as in the description below with all of my other socials. But for now, I wish you a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!